In this video, we're showing you how to install Boost Auto's Lumistep M1, our one-of-a-kind light-up running boards for 2014 through 2019 Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra trucks. Lumistep M1 from Boost Auto is the next upgrade for your Silverado or Sierra. Built with premium components and constructed with 6000 series aerospace grade aluminum, you won't just see Lumistep outshine the rest, you'll feel it too, every step of the way. Light up the night with Lumistep, brightening up your path clear as day. Lumistep features premium lighting functions allowing full customization on your truck. Build your set out and put in your order on our website today. Get your Lumistep M1 running boards and step up your game. This procedure applies to both crew cab and double cab or extended cab 2014 through 2019 GMC Sierra and Chevy Silverado trucks. As always, to check fitment, availability, and to purchase this or any other product offered for your truck, go to BoostAuto.com. If this doesn't fit your specific truck, don't worry, we got a separate Boost Auto install video just for you. Your Lumistep M1 kit will come in two boxes, the running board kit and the hardware kit. The running board kit will contain your running boards with the integrated lights and modules. The kit will also contain the main driver and passenger side harnesses and supplementary parts depending on what you option for. You can either go with our simple plug and play adapter which connects directly to your headlight harness to add lighting features to your boards or use our hardwire adapter to tap to the wires at the headlight directly. If you option for rock light functionality, you can add on our rock light harness that integrates with both our plug and play adapter or our hardwire adapter. The harness also comes with a switch that you can install anywhere on your dash. Adding rock light is a great way to ensure high visibility in the dark, both while driving or parked. Be sure to add rock light when you're building out your running boards. Your hardware kit will contain the driver side brackets and passenger side brackets along with the bracket covers and support brackets. This hardware kit will contain all washers and fasteners needed for your installation. Please note, crew cab applications will have four brackets on each side. In this video, we're using a crew cab truck. Extended cab applications will have one less bracket on each side and so crew cab kits will have the corresponding number of washers and fasteners. As we progress through this install, we'll call out specific hardware used every step of the way. Here's a complete tool list for your reference. You can pause here to collect them, then let's proceed with the install. In this video, we're going to be using our shop lift to better show the procedure. The entirety of the procedure can be easily done on the ground. All the steps shown while on the lift will be the same as doing it on the ground. For this installation, the mounting procedure on the passenger side slightly differs from the driver's side due to the depth tank's close proximity to the running board mounting points. We'll start the installation on the passenger side. Here are your mounting points for your crew cab trucks. You have the ones closest to the front, the second near the rear of the diff tank, followed by the third and fourth mounting point located near the rear of the truck. Now for extended cab applications, you'll have just three mounting points, one in the front, one in the middle, and one in the rear of the truck. Let's start at the front mounting point on the passenger side. Take the upper bracket labeled PF for passenger front and slide it into place near the bottom of the pinch weld. The bottom of the bracket will sit on the pinch weld and the notch of the upper bracket will sit in the brace hole. Here is another look at how the upper bracket sits in the brace hole in the body panel of the vehicle if the def tank was not present. Be sure the bracket is secured firmly in the brace hole and the bracket is flush with the truck. 
Once the upper bracket is in place, take the lower bracket labeled PF and align it at the first mounting point. Take a 13mm bolt with a flat and lock washer and secure the lower bracket to the upper bracket at the pinch weld. They'll hold off on tightening completely for now. Next, move over to the second mounting point located near the rear of the depth tank. The upper bracket for this mounting point will be labeled PC for passenger center. Like before, slide it into place in the body of the vehicle. The upper bracket for the passenger center will also sit on the pinch weld similar to the passenger front. However, you will secure the upper bracket in place with a 13mm bolt, a flat washer, and a lock washer. Once secured, take the corresponding lower bracket labeled PC and install it to the second mounting point. Next, take a 13mm hex bolt with a lock washer and a flat washer and secure the lower bracket to the pinch weld. They'll hold off on tightening completely for now. Now we'll move on to the third mounting point located further down near the rear of the truck. Please note, the third mounting point here is only on crew cab applications. Insert a clip-on nut located to the bottom of the pinch weld and another at the open insert in the body panel. Then secure the lower bracket into place with two 13mm bolts with a flat and lock washer on both of them. Tighten the bolts, but hold off on tightening them all the way since we'll be doing further adjustments down the line. Finally, move down to the rear of the truck where we'll install the fourth and final bracket on the passenger side. Insert a clip-on nut located to the bottom of the pinch weld and another at the open insert in the body panel. Then secure the lower bracket into place with two 13mm bolts with a flat and lock washer on both of them. Finally, tighten the bolts but hold off on tightening them all the way since we'll be doing further adjustments down the line. With the passenger side brackets on, proceed to mounting the driver side brackets. Insert a clip-on nut to the bottom of the pinch weld at all mounting points on this side. On the first two mounting points located near the front of the truck, you can attach the bracket to the vehicle without an additional clip-on nut. An additional clip-on nut must be inserted in the open insert of the body panel on the third and fourth mounting points on the side for crew cab applications and just on the third and final mounting point for extended cab applications. Then secure the lower bracket into place with two 13mm bolts with a flat and lock washer on both of them. Finally, tighten the bolts, but hold off on tightening them all the way since we'll be doing further adjustments down the line. Proceed with installing the remaining brackets on the driver's side in the same way. With all brackets successfully installed, we can go ahead and installing the bracket covers to the brackets. We'll start at the first mounting point on the passenger side of the truck. Line up each cover so its center lines up with the lower bracket. Once the bracket covers are aligned, proceed with installing the screw-on tabs. Install the bracket covers on the other lower brackets on the passenger side in the same way, then repeat on the driver's side. Now we're ready to mount our Lumisep M1 running boards to the brackets. Make sure you're mounting the correct running board on each side. The Lumisep M1 plate as well as the integrated module on each board should face towards the front of the truck. Here we're showing the steps on the passenger side. Before mounting, flip your board over. For crew cab applications, install 8T bolts to the board, 4 on each track. For extended cab applications, it's 6T bolts, 3 on each track. Align the T bolts roughly to the position of the brackets, then drop your running boards onto the brackets. Go ahead and guide all the T-bolts through the holes on the brackets. Then secure each bolt with a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Use a 10mm socket to thread in the nut further. They'll hold off on tightening completely for now. At this time, you can slide your board forward or backwards to your desired preference. Once you have your board where you want it, fasten everything down. Once everything is tightened down, perform the same steps on the driver's side. Ensure the board is lined with the passenger side board before securing all fasteners down. Once everything is installed, we can move on to routing the wiring harnesses to our Lumistep M1 running boards. Start by opening the hood, then disconnect the battery at the negative terminal. Your truck may also have a secondary auxiliary battery as well. If it does, go ahead and disconnect the auxiliary battery at this time too. We'll start on the passenger side. Make sure to use the main harness with the power and ground terminals on this side. Tape the two connectors going to the running board module to a flattened out coat hanger or a strained out metal piece. 
Then route the harness along the passenger side firewall and fender liner away from any heat and or moving parts. Once the strained out metal piece pokes out through the bottom of the passenger side fender, proceed with pulling the harness through. Remove the tape from the connectors and plug them both into the running board module. The connectors are different sizes and will go to corresponding slots on the module. Be sure to secure the harness out of sight. Back under the hood, we'll have to remove the airbox in order to gain access to the headlight housing on the passenger side of the truck. Start by disconnecting the sensor like so. Then loosen the hose clamp and slide the air tubing off the air box. Underneath the sensor on the air box, locate this plastic trim clip attached to the air box and remove it with a trim tool. With that disconnected, go ahead and remove the air box from the vehicle. Now near the front of the truck where you just removed the air box, we must remove these retention clips to gain access to the headlight housing. Once the clips have been removed, you can go ahead and peel back the cover to gain access to the back of the headlight. We'll first show you how to install the plug and play adapter that you can option for your running boards. The plug and play adapter will have two different vehicle specific variations depending on the year and make of your truck. If you do not option for our plug and play adapter, your kit will come with our hardwire adapter instead. For plug and play installation, please follow these next steps. The headlight housing on this truck is an 8 pin connector. Disconnect the 8 pin connector from its housing. Once the 8 pin connector is removed from the housing, insert the plug and play adapter into the connector. Next, feed down the black receiving connector to the headlight housing area, then attach the black receiving connector you just pulled down to the 8 pin connector attached to your plug and play adapter. Once that's connected, install the other end of the plug and play adapter to the headlight housing. On the driver's side, install the plug and play adapter in the same way. If you did not option for the plug and play adapter, your kit will come with our hardwire adapter. Here's a breakdown of that. The red and yellow wire with the quick disconnect is to tap to the turn signal wire on your headlight connector. The turn signal will come standard for all running boards. The blue wire with the quick disconnect is for enabling running light if you option for it. If you did not option for running light, this wire will not be active. You can simply tape the disconnect out of the way. The white wire with the bug connector is for rock light if you option for it. If you did not option for rock light, this wire will not be active, so be sure to take the bug connector out of the way. Simply tapping the wires on the headlight connector for optional applications would not enable these features. The only wires active on your hardwire adapter will be the ones you option for when purchasing your running boards. Again, check out all available lighting options on our website or reach out to our support team with any questions. Your headlight will be configured in one or two different variations and so your wiring will also be different. We'll break them down one at a time for you. If you have a 2014 through 2015 1500 truck or a 2015 through 2019 2500 or 3500 truck, you will have this 8 pin box light connector. However, if you have a 2016 through 2018 1500 truck, you will have a slightly different 8 pin oval light connector. Tapping on the driver's side is the same minus the headlight housing cover on this side of the truck. We'll first look at how our hardwire adapter connects to the 8 pin box light connector on your 2014 through 2015 1500 truck or a 2015 through 2019 2500 or 3500 truck. If you have a 2016 through 2018 1500 truck, please skip ahead to the next section for your vehicle specific procedure. If you have a 2014 through 2015 1500 truck or a 2015 through 2019 2500 or 3500 truck, please follow these next steps. To begin, disconnect the 8 pin box light connector from the headlight housing. Peel back some of the tape on the harness if you want some more room to tap. Start by tapping at pin F for turn signal. Looking at the wire end of the connector with the connector tab on top, pin F is located on the bottom row, second from the left. Use the provided red T-tap and press until it clicks in place. 
Go ahead and take the red and yellow wire from your hardware adapter and connect it to the T-tap here. If you option for running light, go ahead and tap to pin E next. Looking at the wire end of the connector with the connector tab on top, pin E is located on the bottom row all the way on the left. Use the provided red T-tap and press it until it clicks in place. Go ahead and take the blue wire from your hardware adapter and connect it to the T-tap here. Be down the black receiving connector to the headlight housing area. Next, we'll take the black connector on the hardware adapter and connect it to the black receiving connector from the main harness. Once done, go ahead and install the connector back into the headlight housing. Then, move over to the driver's side and repeat these steps. If you have a 2016 through 2018 1500 truck, please follow these next steps. Once the cover is peeled back, you'll have access to the headlight housing. Remove the 8-pin oval light connector from the headlight housing and be sure to cut back some of the tape so you can tap further up the wires. Start by tapping to pin 7 for turn signal. Looking at the wire end of the connector with the connector tab on top, pin 7 is located on the bottom row, third from the left. Use the provided red T-tap and press until it clicks in place. Go ahead and take the red and yellow wire from your hardwire adapter and connect it to the T-tap here. Next, if you option for running light, tap to pin 4. Looking at the wire end of the connector with the connector tab on top, pin 4 is located on the top row all the way to the right. Use the provided red T-tap and press until it clicks in place. Go ahead and take the blue wire from your hardwire adapter and connect it to the T-tap here. Feed down the black receiving connector to the headlight housing area. Next, we'll take the black connector on our hardwire adapter and connect it to the black receiving connector from the main harness. Once done, go ahead and install the connector back into the headlight housing. Then, move over to the driver's side and repeat these steps. The rock light function overrides any existing functions when activated and now puts a solid white light. This will remain on until you switch it off and cannot be overridden by functions such as turn signal or running light. If you did not option for rock light, you can skip to the next section. If you did option for rock light but did not purchase our rock light harness, you will simply need to run a 12 volt power feed to the white wire on the plug and play or hard wire adapter. If you have an existing rock light or an auxiliary switch, you can use that or any 12 volt trigger will do. If you did option for our rock light harness, follow these next steps. Your harness will have this power terminal, two long white wires that will go to the headlight and your switch. Starting on the driver's side, go ahead and grab one of the white wires and route it down towards the headlight connector. Regardless of whether you have our plug and play adapter or our hard wire adapter, the white wire from the rock light harness will connect to the white wire with the butt connector. You may want to have your headlight connector disconnected to have better access to your plug and play adapter or hard wire adapter. Connect the white wire from rock light harness to the white wire on your adapter. Reconnect the headlight connector to the headlight housing. Then pass the other white wire as well as your power terminals to the passenger side and repeat the steps on the passenger side. Pass the red and white wires from the rock light switch to the inside of the cab. Tape the red and white rock light wires to the strained out metal piece. Then guide the metal piece through the firewall to the inside of the cab. Inside the cab, continue to pull the wires through. Locate a suitable spot for the rock light switch and drill a hole into the dash. Once the hole is drilled, install the rock light switch. Be sure to connect the white wire to slot 1 and the red wire to slot 2. Then we must reinstall these retention clips and place the headlight housing cover back in place on the passenger side of the truck. Now we'll go ahead and put back the air box. Go ahead and lower the air box down and be sure to align the pegs at the bottom of the air box to the corresponding spots if it's into below. And slide the air intake tube back on. Once in place, secure it by tightening down the hose clamp. 
Next, reconnect the plastic trim clip on the side of the airbox that we disconnected earlier. Reconnect the sensor. Now with the airbox reinstalled and all the connections connected, reconnect the auxiliary battery if you have one. Once your main harness is connected at the headlight, you can now take the white two pin pass through connector on the driver's side and connect it to the white two pin connector on the passenger side. Let's continue by connecting our harnesses to power and ground. To gain access to the main battery, remove this side trim piece under the hood and place it off to the side. With that out of the way, remove the two bolts holding the support bar to gain access to the battery. Next, pull out the battery cover from the tabs on top of the battery. At your battery, unscrew the nut at the positive terminal. Then connect the red power wire here. If you option for rock light, the power wire from that harness will also connect here. Secure with the previously removed nut. Reinstall the battery cover back into place. Then at the negative terminal of the battery, reconnect the cable. The terminal itself will have a secondary nut. Go ahead and remove the nut. You can connect your ground wire here like you did at the positive terminal. With that complete, reinstall the support bar above the main battery. Then reinstall the side trim piece. Test to make sure all functions are operational at this time. Then secure and tuck any excess wire to the truck, out of the way of any heat and moving components. Congrats on completing your install. Boost Auto's Lumistep M1 light up running boards can be purchased on our website at BoostAuto.com. Boost Auto also offers a wide range of parts and accessories for your truck or SUV. To stay up to date on new product releases and more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's all for now. Catch you in the next one.